welcome to learning radius welcome to learning radius current affairs 2020-21 in this video we'll be discussing economic and social development and we'll be discussing 10 topics of economic and social development and the 10 topics of discussions are revision of duties and taxes on exported products scheme lighthouse projects under ghtc digital payment index dpi scheme to enhance ethanol distillation scheme or scheme to enhance ethanol distillation capacity four percentage inflation appropriate for india national portal for transgender person sdg investor map for india portable devices for water testing multiple bad banks northeastern region power system improvement project so the discussion as it is northeastern region power system improvement project multiple bad banks portable devices for water testing stg investor map for india national portal for transgender person four percentage inflation appropriate for india scheme to enhance ethanol distillation capacity digital payment index dpi lighthouse project under ghtc remission of duties and taxes on exported product scheme The first topic of discussion is remission of duties and taxes on exported products scheme. Taking a major step to boost exports, government has decided to ex extend the benefit of the scheme for remission of duties and taxes on exported products to all export goods with effect from 1st January 2021. So the first topic of discussion is taking a major step to boost exports. Government has decided to extend the benefit of the scheme for remission of duties and taxes on exported products to all export goods with effect from 1st January 2021. The ROD-TEP scheme would refund to exporters the embedded central, state and local duty taxes that were so far not being rebated or refunded and were therefore placing our export at a disadvantage. The refund would be credited in an exporter's ledger account with customs and used to pay basic customs duty on imported goods. The credit can also be transferred to other importers. The new scheme combines Two existing ones, merchandise export from India scheme and rebate of state and central taxes and levies scheme covering governments. So here the discussion as it is related to remission of duties and taxes on exported products scheme. Take a major step to boost export government has decided to extend the benefit of the scheme for remission of duties and taxes on, ex on exported product to all export goods with effect from 1st January 2021. Remission of duties and taxes on exported product scheme would refund to exporters the embedded central, state and local duties or taxes that were so far not being rebated or refunded and were therefore placing our exports at a disadvantage. So the new scheme combines two existing ones, merchandise export from India scheme that is MEIS and rebate of state and central taxes and levies scheme covering garments. So these are the basic area you are supposed to understand in connection with remission of duties and taxes on exported products scheme. Now next one is lighthouse project under GHTC. Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi will lay the foundation stone of lighthouse projects under global housing technology challenge India at six sites across six states. The lighthouse project showcases the best of new age alternate global technologies, materials and processes in the construction sector for the first time in the country at such a large scale. So that is in connection with GHTC. Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi will lay the foundation stone of lighthouse projects under Global Housing Technology Challenge India, that is GHTC India, at six sites across six states. The lighthouse project showcases the best new age alternate global technologies, materials and processes in the construction sector for the first time in the country at such a large scale. They are being constructed under GHTC India which envisages to provide an ecosystem for adoption of innovative technologies in the housing construction sector in a holistic manner. The LHPs are being constructed at Indore, that is in Madhya Pradesh, Rajkot in Gujarat, Chennai in Tamil Nadu, Ranchi in Jharkhand, Agatala in Tripura and Lucknow in UP. So that's about Lighthouse Project under GHTC and the Lighthouse Project showcases the best of new age, alternate global technologies, materials and processes in the construction sector for the first time in the country at, a, at such a large scale. So that is about the 
Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi will lay the foundation stone of Lighthouse Project under Global Housing Technology Challenge India at six sites across six states is about. And it comprises about 1,000 houses at each location along with allied infrastructure facilities. This project will demonstrate and deliver ready to leave houses at an expedited pace with 12, within 12 months as compared to conventional brick and mortar construction and will be more economical, sustainable, of high quality and durability. Technology used at various locations. This LHP demonstrates a variety of technologies, including prefabricated sandwich panel system in LHP at indoor, monolithic concrete construction using tunnel formwork in LHP at Rajkot, precast concrete construction system in LHP at Chennai, 3D volumetric precast concrete construction system in LHP at Ranchi, Structural steel frame with the light gray steel infill panel in LHP at uh, Agartala. PVC stay in place formwork system in LHP at Lucknow. So here the technologies I'll read once again. It is free prefabricated uh, sandwich panel system, monolithic concrete construction, precast concrete construction system in LHP, 3D volumetric precast concrete construction system. Structural steel frame with a light gauge steel, PVC stay in place formwork system. So these are the six technologies used at various locations, which is significant. LHP will serve as live laboratories for facilitating transfer of technology to the field and its further applications. Next topic of discussion is Digital Payment Index DPI. The Reserve Bank of India has constructed a composite digital payment index to capture the extent of digitalization of payment services in India. The RBI DPA comprises five broad parameters which measure the penetration of digital payment in the country over different time periods. These parameters include payment enablers, weightage of 25%, payment infrastructure demand side factor 10%, payment infrastructure supply side factor 15%, payment performance 45%, and consumer centricity 5%. So Digital Payment Index DPI, the Reserve Bank of India has constructed a composite digital payment index to capture the extent of digitalization of payment services in India. The RBI DPI comprises five broad parameters which measure the, which measure the penetration of digital payment in the country over different time periods. So that's about RBI DPI, that is RBI and Composite Digital Payment Index that is, uh, RBI and DPI means uh, Reserve Bank of India and Digital Payment Index comprises five broad parameters which measure the penetration of digital payment in the country over a different time period. And these five parameters uh, include payment enablers, weightage of 25%, payment infrastructure demand side factors, that is 10% weightage, payment infrastructure supply side factors, 15%, and payment performance, 45%, and consumer centricity, 5%. Beside each parameter has subparameters which in turn consist of various, various measurable indicators. The RBI DPI has been constructed with March 2018 as the base period and DPI score for March 2018 is set at 100. The DPI for March 2019 and March 2020 work out of 153.47 and 207.84 respectively. RBI DPI shall be published on its website every six months from March 2021 with a lag of four months. So that is something very unique as far as uh, RBI and DPI is concerned. So the Reserve Bank of India has constructed a composite digital payment index to capture the extent of digitalization of payment services in India. So to understand the extent of digital payment services of India, we have a composite digital payment index in our country. And I told in detail what is DPI is about. This topic of discussion is scheme to enhance ethanol distillation capacity. And the logic of the scheme is diversion of excess sugarcane and sugar to ethanol is a correct way forward to deal with surplus stock. Diversion of excess sugar would help in stabilizing the domestic X mill sugar prices and will also help sugar mills to get relieved from storage problems. It will improve their cash flows and facilitate them in clearance of cane price to use of farmers and will facilitate mills to function in the coming years. So that's about the scheme to enhance ethanol distillation capacity. And the logic of the scheme, as like I mentioned, diversion of excess sugarcane and sugar to ethanol is a correct way forward to deal with surplus stocks. 
Diversion of excess sugar would help in stabilizing the domestic ex mill sugar prices and will also help sugar mills to get relief from storage problems. It will improve their cash flows and facilitate them in clearance of cane price due of farmers and will facilitate mills to function in the coming years. Now, government targets in ethanol blending. Government has fixed target of 10% blending of fuel grade ethanol with petrol by 2022, 15% blending by 2026, and 20% 20 blending by 2030. With a view to support sugar sector and the interest of sugarcane farmers, the government has had the government has also allowed production of ethanol from B heavy molasses, sugarcane juice, sugar syrup, and sugar, and has been fixing the remunerative ex mill price of ethanol derived from C heavy molasses, B heavy molasses, and ethanol derived from sugarcane juice, sugar syrup, sugar, and sugar syrup for ethanol season. So that's about the government target in ethanol blending. As like I mentioned, government has fixed target of 10% blending of fuel grade ethanol with petrol by 2022, 15% blending by 2026, and 20% 20 blending by 2030. At the same time, with a view to support sugar sector and in the interest of sugarcane farmers, the government has allowed production of ethanol from B heavy molasses, sugarcane juice, sugar syrup, and sugar, and has been fixing the remunerative ex mill price of ethanol derived from C heavy molasses, B heavy molasses, and ethanol derived from sugarcane juice, sugar, sugar syrup for ethanol season. So that's a discussion about ethanol blending. Next discussion is 4% inflation appropriate for India. Maintaining 4% inflation is appropriate for India's targeting. A lower rate could impart deflationary bias to the monetary policy, said a Reserve Bank paper. Under the current dispension, the RBI has been mandated by the government to maintain retail inflation at 4% with a margin of 2% on either side. The paper authored by RBI Deputy Governor Michael Dibabrata Patra and another official, Harendra Kumar Behara, has found a steady decline in trend inflation to 4.1% to 4.3% since 2014. So 4% inflation appropriate for India. Maintaining 4% inflation is appropriate for India as targeting a lower rate could impart deflationary bias to the monetary policy, said a Reserve Bank paper. Under the current dispension, sorry, dispensation, the RBI has been mandated by the government to maintain retail inflation at 4% with a margin of 2% on either side. Section 45ZA of the Reserve Bank of India Act 1934 mandates the central government shall in consultation with the bank determine the inflation target once in every five years. The inflation target has to be reviewed by end March 2021. In this context, trend inflation provides the metric to gauge the appropriate level of the target going forward. Now, what is the need of NPC? The, sorry, what is the need of uh, MPC? That is Monetary Policy Committee. So, in a bit to keep inflation under specified level, the government in 2016 had decided to set up Monetary Policy Committee headed by the RBI governor, entrusted with the task of fixing the benchmark policy rate, that is repo rate. Next discussion is National Portal for Transgender Person. Union Minister for Social Justice and Empowerment, Sri Thawarchand Gaulat, he launched a National Portal for Transgender Person, inaugurated a Grameen Grah, a shelter home for transgender person in Vadodara, Gujarat. National Portal for Transgender Person has been developed within two months of notification of transgender person protection of rights rules 2020 on 29 September 2020. It will help a transgender person in applying for a certificate and identity card digitally from anywhere in India. So it's a national portal for transgender that is the discussion. And uh, here it is about uh, Garima Grah. So that is the term you are supposed to keep in your mind, G-A-R-I-M-A, Garima and uh, G-R-E-H Grah or Grah. You can think in that manner. A shelter home for transgender person in Vadodara, Gujarat. So national portal for transgender Gujarat, it will help a transgender person in applying for a certificate and an identity card digitally from anywhere in India. So that is the discussion about. The most important benefit is that it will help the transgender person to get the I card without any physical interface and without having to visit any office. In case of delay or rejection, the applicant has the option to submit grievances through the portal, which are forwarded to the concerned person and will be resolved at the earliest. The portal will help a lot of people from the community to come forward 
and get transgender certificate and identity card as per their self perceived identity which is an important provision of the transgender person protection of rights act 2019 so the most important benefit is that it will help the transgender person to get the i card without any physical interface and without having to visit any office that's the first one in case of delay or rejection the applicant has the option to submit grievances through the portal which are forwarded to the concerned person and will be resolved at the earliest the person will be help so the, the portal will help a lot of people from the community to come forward and get transgender certificate and identity card as per their self perceived identity which is an important provision of the transgender protection sorry which is an important provision of the transgender persons protection of right act 2019 next discussion is sdg investor map for india the sdg finance facility platform at undp in partnership with investment sorry in partnership with invest india the investment promotion arm of the government of india has developed the sdg investor map for india so sdg investor map for india sdg finance facility platform at undp in partnership with invest india the investment promotion arm of the government of india has developed the sdg investor map for india the map will help public and private sector stakeholders direct capital toward investment opportunity areas and wide spaces areas of potential that can contribute to the nationally determined sustainable development needs of the country so that is about the sdg investor map for india the map will help public and private sector stakeholders direct capital towards investment opportunity areas and wide spaces areas of potential that can contribute to the nationally determined sustainable development needs of the country developed through a comprehensive processes that include extensive consultation with a number of leading pe or vc firms development finance institutions impact investors independent think tanks and government organizations the map has identified 18 iias and eight wide space across six priority sectors including education healthcare agriculture and allied services financial services renewable energy and alternatives and sustainable environment next discussion is about portable devices for water testing the national jal jeevan mission has launched an innovation challenge in partnership with department of promotion of industry and internal trade to develop portable devices for water testing the main objective of the exercise is to bring an innovative modular and cost effective solution to develop portable devices that can be used at the household level to test the drinking water quality instantly easily and accurately so that is portable device for water testing the national jal jeevan mission this is a significant point from upsc perspective the national jal jeevan mission has launched an innovation challenge in partnership with the department of promotion of industry and internal trade to develop portable devices for water testing so far 2.90 crore household have been provided tap water connection the need of for the challenge the people receive piped water supply in their homes do not have any means to test portability of water coming from their taps this lead to situation where in quite often people are reluctant to consume tap water directly people in urban area also end up installing household water treatment units incurring additional expenditure the challenge aim to address this issues in an innovative modular and cost effective manner jal jeevan mission is under implementation in partnership with the state to enable every rural home to have tap water connection by 2024 so this is a poster related to jal jeevan mission 13 water quality parameters under jal jeevan mission total alkalinity total hotness sulfate iron total arsenic fluoride nitrate and total coliform bacteria and e coli or thermotolerant coliform bacteria not detectable in any 100 ml sample so that is a ph value total dissolved solid turbidity and chloride everything as it is mentioned and the significant point is jal jeevan mission and the quality parameters under jal jeevan mission the next term is multiple bad banks the confederation of indian industry has urged the government to consider setting up multiple bad banks to address the problem of mounting non performing assets of state owned lenders which has worsened due to covid led disruption this is a latest proposal on bad banks market based mechanism will encourage public sector banks to sell their bad loans without fear of question being raised later with cleaner balance sheet psb should be able to raise capital from the market obviating the need for recapitalization by the government as part of its pre budget recommendations cii urged the government 
to consider enabling foreign portfolio investors and alternative investment fund to purchase NPS. According to RBI, gross NPS of bank may increase from 8.5 percentage in March 2020 to 12.5 percentage by March 2021. What does a bad bank do? A bad bank buys the bad loans of other lenders and financial institutions to help clear their balance sheets. So that's a concept is very simple. A bad bank buy the bad loans of other lenders and financial institutions to help clear their balance sheets. The last topic of discussion is related to Northeastern Region Power System Improvement Project. The Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs chaired by Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi has improved the revised cost estimate of Northeastern Region Power System Improvement Project at an estimated cost of Rs 6,700 crore. This is a major step towards economic development of Northeastern Region through strengthening of intra-state transmission and distribution system. So the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs chaired by Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi has approved the revised cost estimate of Northeastern Region Power System Improvement Project at an estimated cost of 6,700 crore. The scheme is being implemented through Power Grid, a public sector undertaking under Ministry of Power in association with six beneficiary Northeastern states, namely Assam, Manipur, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Nagaland and Tibra, and is targeted to be commissioned by December 2021. After commissioning, the project will be owned and maintained by the respective of Northeastern state utilities. The main objective of the project is government commitment for the total economic development of Northeastern region and to strengthen the intra-state transmission and distribution infrastructure in Northeastern region. Implementation of this scheme will create a reliable power grid and improve NER state connectivity to the upcoming load centers and thus extend the benefit of the grid's con sorry and thus extend the benefits of the grid connected power to all categories of consumers of beneficiaries in northeastern region. The main objective of the project is government commitment for the total economic development of northeastern region and to strengthen the industry, transmission and distribution infrastructure in the northeastern region. Implementation of this scheme will create a reliable power grid and improve NER states connectivity to the upcoming load centers and thus extend the benefit of the grid connection power, grid connected power to all categories of consumers of beneficiaries in northeastern region. The scheme will, the scheme also increases the per capita power consumption of these states and shall contribute to the total economic development of northeastern region. The scheme was initially approved in December 2014 as a central sector plan scheme of Ministry of Power and is being funded with the assistance of World Bank Fund and by the government of India through budget support of Ministry of Power on 50-50 basis. So that's about the Northeastern Region Power System Improvement Project. The Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs chaired by Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi has approved the revised cost estimate of Northeastern Region Power System Improvement Project at an estimated cost of Rs 6,700 crore. The scheme was initially approved in December 2014 as a central sector plan scheme of Ministry of Power and is being funded with the assistance of World Bank or funded with the assistance of World Bank Fund and by the Government of India through budget support of Ministry of Power on 50-50 basis or 50 to 50 basis. So that's all about economic and social development, these 10 topics and in the next video we'll be discussing another 10 topics. So all the topics are very significant and watch the analysis and understanding video related to economic and social development. Then as an aspirant, you will get clarity what actually UPSC is asking from current affairs related to economic and social development. Especially when you watch the analysis video, you'll understand how UPSC is transforming a current affair into a beautiful question in preliminary examination. So all these topics are significant from that point of view. In the next video, we'll be discussing another 10 topics related to economic and social development. That's all for now. Have a great time. Thank you.